Hi, I'm Megan Blanchett with O'Reilly Media, and I'm here with Steve Francia from TenGen, and we're going to talk today about what he's working on. Uh, Steve, your talk here at Straw New York is about enterprise NoSQL applications. What are some of the top alternatives that companies might choose to a Hadoop, depending on their needs? So what we're, what we're finding is a lot of companies are using Hadoop, um, and they're doing it alongside of a bunch of other things. Most people aren't using just Hadoop by itself, but it's part of a, a mix of a bunch of different technologies. Um, and we're finding a lot of people are also turning to alternatives. There's some Hadoop, as, as powerful as a tool it is, sometimes is, uh, is a bit cumbersome to set up and use, and a lot of people are turning to other technologies, uh, like Storm and Spark, that have advantages of being a little easier to set up, a little easier to get going. Another reason um, some people are turning to alternative technologies is because they, they want it more real time. Hadoop's a batch processor, and it, and it does a really good job for that, but sometimes you need something to really analyze the data as it's coming in, uh, or convert or modify the data, and in, in those cases, they're turning to, to these alternatives. A lot of the things we're seeing is Storm and Spark. Interesting, and at TenGen, what are you currently working on right now? So at, at TenGen, um, our main product is MongoDB, um, and, and most people know us for that. Um, big thing is we, we, we released our 2.2 release over the summer. Um, it was a, a pretty monumental release for us, actually the largest release to date. Um, and it focused a lot on better concurrency um, and, and better performance. And, and um, these features are, are really essential when we're working in the enterprise space. Uh, one of the big things it also introduced was our aggregation framework. So previously, we, MongoDB was more or less a, a good a operational storage uh, for your big data, but didn't do uh, much for the processing side. So we, we uh, created an aggregation framework uh, because as good as MapReduce is uh, for doing things, we feel it's a bit of a, of a hammer, right, and when you, everything's a nail. Um, and we found that most people's needs weren't... Um, well, well, you could use MapReduce to do them. That, that was a, a bit of overkill. We found that uh, in talking to our customers that 80% of the things they did uh, actually were more simple aggregations, so groupings and sortings um, and small transformations rather than big processing. And so we, we built this aggregation framework to be able to, to really customize and handle those. It's written in C++. Uh, it runs in, in native code. It's really quick on the data. Uh, so we still support MapReduce and, and Hadoop and all the other external ways of, of manipulating your data, but, um, but this uh, aggregation, uh, we call it a pipeline, uh, works really well. And it, and it really accomplishes what a lot of people's needs are. Yeah, it looks like you're really narrowing down on what people are looking for. And what's been the biggest challenge in figuring that out? Uh, so the big thing is just talking to our customers. And one of the benefits of being an open source um, company is that everything, all of our communication, all of our code is out in the public. And so we get lots of feedback from people. Um, in fact, uh, largely our roadmap is driven by our customers and users. Um, all of our tickets are, are public and online, and people vote on them. And that's how we decide uh, what goes in the next release. So it's, it's based on the user feedback, um, as well as um, talking to some of our more corporate customers. And, and getting some of their needs in there. But it, we really try and give everybody a seat at the table and let them contribute to what, what we're doing next. Um, and so, so our 2.2 release, we introduced all these great features to really focus on the enterprise and, and big data space. Uh, for 2.4, we're, we're taking those further. So we're going to add a lot of uh, a few new pipelines into this aggregation framework, let you do a, more with it. Uh, we're really focused on better performance and better concurrency. Uh, essentially, just to be able to work better in more situations. Um, and so 2.4 is scheduled to come out beginning of uh, 2013, um, and, and we're really looking forward to that. We're also working more with um, the different Hadoop vendors and the different data processing vendors. And so we've, uh, alongside of this, we've been working on uh, better connectors for Hadoop, uh, better support for Hive and Pig inside of uh, MongoDB um, as of... Uh, about six months ago, you can use MongoDB uh, as a native data source for Hadoop, uh, which was a, a big win for us. And, and a lot of companies have, uh, have really benefited from the be able to take where they're storing their data and where they're processing data and have a, really a, a native integration between the two. Um, so we're going to deepen that uh, integration um, as well as do more with 
the other data processing uh, uh, products that are coming on the market. And do you, I'm past 2.4, do you have a vision of what you guys are wor working toward in future releases and kind of the future of what TenGen is trying to achieve? Yeah, we, um, so we, we see uh, MongoDB as a, as a long-term project. We, we see this as, as a revolution uh, in, in this uh, industry that's been around for a long time and it's grown somewhat stagnant. Um, and so we, we've, we've got short term. We know we've got the feature set of what's going into 2.4, and we've started queuing up things for the next release of 2.6, uh, mostly things that wouldn't fit in 2.4 going to the next release. Um, and beyond that, we've got a lot of uh, high-level ideas of what we're looking for. Um, one of the big features that um, uh, isn't, is part of big data, um, but isn't so much in the traditional sense, is better natural language processing. Uh, better full text searching, um, enabling people to do more real time uh, searching on their data. Um, so that, that's a pretty big feature of where we're going um, in the future with the product. Is Mongo to be on a steady release schedule? Will 2.6 come out so many months after 2.4 now, or is it still? There is a steady release schedule, and we um, try very hard to hit it, um, but our shipping is always when it's done. Uh, so we, when you're working with so many companies, it's such a foundational piece of technology. Um, we, we really are focused on getting it right and making it secure um, and stable for all of our companies. So we're, um, we try and do it about every six months, but um, we're, we're really focused on getting it polished and, and ready to ship. And so we're, we're okay with it slipping uh, a little bit. It's a lot like books. It's, it's a lot like books, yes. Um, and so to kind of finish up, what's something, I know you're working on 2.4, but what's really exciting to you right now, like even maybe outside MongoDB, but what are you really excited about? So I think the, the biggest thing that I'm excited in, it's, it's something that all of us are really participating in, but it, it's how it's enabling, right? These new technologies are enabling us to do things that we could never do before. Um, if you think about even a decade ago, uh, we had big data needs then, uh, as an industry, but the the people that were really successful were the people that were able to tap into them. So you found that like Google was innovative in the way that they were able to handle big data and no one else really could, right? And they did that how? Because they had the knowledge, they had the bright minds that were able to, to really work on it and they had the capital and they had the resources. Um, and, and it's been pretty much that same story for the last decade. It's that the people that were winning were the people that could handle big data, and these were a select group of companies that could uh, ha afford to do it. And now you've got, to, in the last two or three years, you've got all these great products coming out, the NoSQL products that enable the storing of all this big data, um, the processing products like Hadoop that enable the processing. right? And these two are coming together at the same time to really enable the c entire community to have access to things that used to be exclusive. Uh, and so we're seeing fascinating products come out as a result of this. And, and this is what really excites me, is that we're going to see better products um, tapping into users' needs better as a result of being able to both store and use the data as well as process it and make these decisions uh, based on our, our findings within it. Uh, so we're seeing some great products from everywhere from healthcare, which we're seeing lots of movement um, progress in, um, to you know, apps like Foursquare and, and things that um, are, are, you know, help us know what to do and have fun. Okay, well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me today. Oh, thank you.